Hi everyone, Grant for the Flame Learning Channel. In this video, you'll learn the workflow to clean up your images using 3D shapes and projections. In a lot of cases, this might be a lot quicker than the traditional 3D tracking and projection technique. Now we'll be covering two methods, and they differ slightly when it comes to projecting the clean frame. If you would like to follow along, please click the link in the description below or type the displayed link in your web browser. Looking at the downloaded media, here you have a shot of a building in Montreal and you would like to remove the sign on the bin as well as this bin lid. Now this technique can be used in any situation, whether you're removing signage, people or generally creating a clean plate. The first step is to identify a good reference frame to clean up. I'll choose frame 20, as this is a clean frame in a somewhat bumpy shot. Now in the batch node bin, drag out a paint node and connect the clip into the red front input. Double click on the paint node and press F4 for the result view. You can use any cleaning technique you'd like, but in this case, let's use recursive clone. To set the clone reference, hold Control and click on a clone area. The second click will define the paint offset. Remember you can also hold the S keyboard shortcut and resize your brush without going back to the interface. Now clone out the sign. Next, we also want to remove this bin lid and reveal the wall. So go ahead and use Recursive Clone to remove the lid and recreate sections of the wall. You could obviously spend much more time to make this look even better, but let's move on to the next step. Swipe back to the batch schematic and drag out a MUX node. Connect the output from the paint node. Inside the MUX node controls, click the Freeze Current Frame button to lock to the entire length of the composite. You can see the frame number here, or back in the batch schematic. Now let's move on to the next step involving the Action Compositor. Drag out an Action node from the batch node bin and connect the original clip into the Action background. With the Action node still selected, press Ctrl N for a new media input. Connect the output of the MUX node into the red front of the media input. Double click on the Action node for its controls and go to a 2 up view with ALT 2. So you should have the Action Schematic view and the Result view. By default, Action creates an image object for each media input. Since we're using 3D shapes instead, delete these objects from the Action Schematic. Ensure you are on frame 20 and zoom in the area to clean up. Frame 20 corresponds with the clean up frame from the previous nodes. Go to the Action Node Bin menu and ensure that the clean frame is selected in Media Input 1. In the Node Bin, drag out the 3D shape into the Action Schematic. Very importantly, you need to drag the nodes into the schematic and not double click it. This ensures that the GMOSC axis remains in the centre of the screen and any offsetting or tracking should work as expected. Now draw a mask around the sign. This initial shape will be for the planar track, but you can refine it for the actual 3D shape if required. To perform the planar track, double click the GMOSC axis in the Action Schematic. Hover over the result view and press F8 for the selected axis object view. Now switch to the axis tracking menu and choose planar tracking. Since the reference frame is frame 20, you need to track forward and backward. Press the Analyze button. To track backward, click the Go to Ref button and change the direction to backward. Click Analyze again. When you scrub the time bar, 
the G mask should be tracked to the sign. Now you can reshape the mask over the sign and even add softness if needed. Hover over the viewport and press F4 for the result view. Just bear in mind that if you apply softness to a G-Mosk for a 3D shape, you need to call up the 3D shape controls and set the G-Mosk transparency to 4 3D shape only. So the 3D shape geometry matches the shot. To project the painted frame onto the 3D shape, go back to frame 20 and you can enable Media Projection. So for frame 20, everything lines up. But as soon as you scrub the time bar, the projection does not match the other frames. This is because the projection is always aligned with the 3D camera. To make this work, you need to copy the tracking animation to the projection. Ensure you are still on frame 20. Select the axis of the G-Mask and switch to the Animation menu. Press SHIFT-TAB to expose all the selected channels. Now click the COPY button to copy the selected curves. Collapse the animation channels. Select the axis of the projection and press SHIFT-TAB again to frame its animation channels. Click the PASTE button. Very importantly, you copied on the frame of reference and pasted on the frame of reference. When you scrub the time bar, the projection now moves with the tracked 3D shape. So that is the first way to use 3D shapes and projections to clean up an image. The second method is slightly different and you don't need to expose the animation channels like this. So let's remove the bin lid. Like before, to line things up, you need to be working on the same frame as your cleaned frame. So go to frame 20. Now go back to the Action Node Bin menu and ensure the reference frame is selected in Media Input 1. Before adding the 3D shape, make sure everything is deselected in the Action Schematic, otherwise the nodes will attach to the selection as they are created. Go to the Action Node Bin and remember to drag out the 3D Shape node into the Action Schematic and not double click it. Once again, this ensures that the G-Mask axis is in the centre of the image. Now draw the mask over the area to cover the bin lid. Double click the G-Mask axis for its controls and switch the result view to the Axis Object view with F8. Change the tracker to Planar. Now analyse forward, go back to the reference and analyse backward. So the cleaned up frame of the bin should now be tracked. Switch back to the result view with F4. Select the G-Mask and soften the mask with a gradient point. Because this is a 3D shape, Go to the 3D Shape menu and set the G-Mask transparency to 4 3D Shape only. Now instead of enabling the Media Projection, which is part of the 3D Shape functionality, you can use a Diffuse Map to texture the 3D Shape. It's slightly more flexible than the Embedded Projection. So ensure the 3D Shape is selected in the Action Schematic and go to the Action Node Bin. With the reference frame still selected in the media list, locate the diffuse map in the Action Node Bin and drag it into the Action Schematic. Similar to the first method, the diffuse map only lines up with the reference frame at frame 20. So firstly, double click on the diffuse map and in the texture menu, set the mapping to projection. This projects the texture from the camera's point of view. To match the movement on each frame, instead of going through the animation channels, select the tracked G-Mask axis and duplicate the node with CTRL D. So this node holds the same tracking data. Next, hold SHIFT and drop it into the connection after the 3D shape. When you scrub the time bar, 
you get the exact same expected result from both methods. Now this shot will need a bit of motion blur and grain to finish it off. For the grain, you would just take a matte output from Action and regrain it in the batch flow graph. However, when using 3D shapes, it is important to remember that the geometry is created in Action every frame. Therefore, it does not generate motion vector data. In artist terms, you can't apply motion blur to 3D shapes using camera effects shaders. Instead, you would switch to the Action Node Preferences menu and under the Rendering tab, you can enable Action's built in motion blur. Set the samples to 10 and the shutter to 0.5 to match the original motion blur of the shot. Let's take a look at the final rendered result. So those are the two methods you can use when cleaning up an image with 3D shape and projections. It's fast and it doesn't require the enormity of a 3D track when you just have to do basic image cleaning within your shot. Don't forget to check out the other features, workflows and enhancements to Flame 2019. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos and thanks for watching.